What is up everybody? Welcome back to Case Digital. In today's video, we're going to be answering the question of how to comment in Python. So without further ado, let's hop right in and start coding. All right, everybody, like I mentioned, today we're talking about and answering the question of how to comment in Python. And before we begin, I kind of want to jump in and just, like for those who don't know, I want to jump in and mention what a comment is. Essentially, a comment is a way to communicate with other developers, like how, for instance, how a section of code is supposed to work um, or, you know, what these two lines of code may be doing, because oftentimes you're going to get more complicated lines of code than something like this. I mean, this is the setup that we're going to use today for simplicity's sake, but we're going to go in and show you how you can comment and do stuff. But a lot of times, you know, say you get two complicated pieces of code that deal with something within the math realm and you're doing some, you know, trigonometry or calculus and, you know, to the, you know, normal developer coming in and looking at this, they're going to be like, what, what is, what, is, what is that saying right there? And to be able to help them, you know, to be able to communicate them or even to be able to communicate to yourself later in the future, you know, oftentimes people come in and they leave a comment. So let's now talk about how you will write a comment in Python. So writing this comment and uh, writing a comment in Python is actually really simple because essentially all you have to do is start the line or start your comment section with a hashtag. So as you see up here, I have a comment already in this document that shows how to comment in Python. Um, and essentially what this does is in the Python interpreter, basically getting out kind of bare bones, when it sees this, it says, hey, everything after this, like even if, like I can say this adds two line or two variables together. And basically what this is saying is everything after this um, hashtag, it just, it's gonna emit. The Python interpreter will not you know, look at it and it'll just go on and, and move to these other lines of code. And essentially if I you know, print this out, like nothing is gonna happen except for my print statement down here. Um, and to show that I can say Python, a comment and you see that you know five and six is 11 so that is essentially how you comment out a single line of code now i can go in and on in vs code essentially um these ides or these editors they have shortcuts that allow you to comment out single lines of code so for instance on a mac if i hit control or excuse me command uh backslash uh there it is or command forward slash excuse me um it will then comment out that line of code if i hit command forward slash again it will uncomment the line of code now, if you're on a Windows, I believe it's Control forward slash, and it'll do the it'll do the same thing in VS Code. That's kind of the default um, for a lot of IDEs, actually, I believe. But that is essentially how you comment out a single line of code. Now, what happens if you want to, like, for instance? add like an inline because this essentially is a line of code right that we just commented out what happens if we want to add a comment after this so if i do you know hey this is a magic number for whatever reason i say that and so for that is essentially how you write inline so this is going to be inline comment where essentially i'm writing inside the same line as the other pieces of code but you'll notice if i run this again I still get the same answer. It's only ignore, like the Python interpreter is only ignoring, ignoring this part of line six. It's still using this part. Now, what happens if I were to go and say, oh, I wanted to do this here? Well, now if I run this, look, our IDE is telling us that, hey, you're gonna get an error. And if I try and run this again, look, I say, I get an error that says error name, A is not defined. It's because look, we just commented it out. So again, that's, you just need to be careful with your comments on where you place them. You can either place them on a single line, like above a, a set of code or a section of code, or you can place them inline. Now let's answer the question of how to comment out multiple lines of code in Python. Okay, so to actually comment out a or to comment out multiple lines of code in Python, unfortunately, there's not like something in like HTML, like worth like HTML or um, C++ or all these different things where you can actually, you know, use different tags to like have a start tag and an end tag and everything in between it comments out. In Python, it's really you have to unfortunately go line by line and add the hashtag in front of every single line that you want commented out. And that is technically how you comment out multiple lines of code in Python. So that kind of sucks because like, you're like, well, what happens if, you know, I have like a thousand lines of codes I want to come out and trust me, like I've been there on programs I'm working on. I'm like, oh crap, I need to get rid of, you know, this section of code or, but I don't want to get rid of it. So I just comment it out and I'm like, oh man, gotta go comment this out. Well, that's the, that's the nice thing. And the, the kind of the beauty about working in with IDEs like uh, VS Code or be just being familiar with the editors that you're using. Um, because a lot of times, if I just uh, control Z all this, I can go in and if I highlight a block of code in VS Code and I hit that command forward slash, it actually will comment all those out for me. Um, and I don't have to manually go through and comment out, you know, in this case, it's only a few lines of code, but 
if it was, you know, 50, 100, 1,000 lines of code that you're having to comment out and check something, then, you know, that's what's handy about these editors, especially with Python. Because in other, in other programming languages, they have different ways to comment out multiple blocks. But in Python, it's just the comment is represented by um, the hashtag. And even though that, like, the comment is, re you know, in Python is solely represented by the hashtag, a lot of times what you'll do, you'll see is if I um, control Z all this, oops, get that back to where it was. A lot of times what you'll see is some people go in and they do something like this. You see these uh, three quotes and, and then text in the middle of it. This is a doc string. And so this essentially, this is a, if you've seen one of my previous videos, this is another way to kind of uh, write a string. This is actually the technical term of this with the three, whether it's double quotes or single quotes, if it's three in a row, the you know, the, the text and then another three in a row, this is, this is considered a doc string. And this is actually used for documentation, um, for ma mostly for users. Now, again, like I mentioned in the beginning, comments are used for the developers to help them to be able to do different things. And oftentimes, like when you see these type of comments in pieces of code, like the single line, this is the comments for people who are actively developing and doing stuff inside this code base. Whereas a doc string more or less is used to tell the, the developers or the users of your piece of code, hey, this is the function of this code. Because a lot of times you'll see something where it's like, they have a function like say, you know, add, and this is my function to add and it takes an A and a B, right? And oftentimes you'll see C and then we'll just do, we'll just do this. Take this piece of code, do that. And then we'll replace all this stuff right here. I'll leave that, but we'll replace this with, we're gonna say add and then A and B, right? So now if I run this, essentially I should see that I get just 11, I get this print out. Well, if someone were to come in and be like, well, what does this do? What does this function do? Now this, in this case, this is super simple. Remember, like I'm going basics here, basics here but you could have a super complicated function that takes in a bunch of different parameters and outputs different stuff. But essentially, if I come in here and as the developer, I write some documentation or a, um, a doc string. Now I have a, a handy dandy, you know, little uh, Visual Studio Code extension called, uh, I think it's doc string, but essentially, um, actually, let me, I'll look it up for you. So I have this, yeah, auto doc string or yeah. And that's the extension that I use. And essentially like I can type three in a row, like as you saw, and one, two, three, and you see this like little line come up, says generate doc string. If I hit enter, it'll then generate everything for me. And it basically kind of, this is nice because it kind of gives you a format that doc strings are usually done in. And that basically the summary part, you go in and say, you know, this adds two numbers. And then the type of this is, if I were to add typing in Python, which is a little bit more advanced, uh, but essentially I know this is gonna be an int, this is gonna be an int, and then a number, a number. Now what's interesting is, is I can actually do where I can go and say, I can say print add dot doc. Yeah, there it is. So I'm passing it the function and I'm gonna print out the documentation of that function. Now, if I go, um, I just run this, you should see now that it ran our code. We just ran a add a equals a and b and then we got c and then I said print out the documentation and then look, this is what it prints out for us. It says this adds two numbers, args a, you know, and b. And a lot of times this is helpful too because if people are using something like an IDE and they go to use, um, like they're going to use your function, say, you can say add and look inside the, like the IntelliSense of the, um, the, the IDE, like in Visual Studio Code, like you can see like, hey, look, our add function that's above, this is, this is what it's saying. It's saying add, it takes in a and a b and the type could be any and, out, and doesn't return anything. And look, it says this adds two numbers, args, a is an int, b is an number, and they're both a and b and then there's a number. And then if I do a, look, it highlights a and you can say, oh, this is a, and then it auto goes to b and says b, and then there it is. So that's the difference. A doc string is essentially used for those that are gonna use your code and it's not it's not necessarily a comment. Like it's not something that, uh, I mean, you could uh, technically, technically you could still use it as a comment um, in the way that, depending on where it's placed, like if you're in, in like a script format, if you place you know, a doc string like this over above, over a set of code, the IDE won't kind of interpret, I think it will still interpret it, but it won't actually like display it. But if like you're using like a Juniper notebook or doing something and you put this like below it, it would display it in your Juniper network. So like essentially, if you're trying to do comments and you're trying to do a block set of comments, the best way to do it is essentially, um, like in this case, I'm gonna do con uh, command forward slash and is to use the comment, is to use the comment hashtag. Cause that in Python is what um, is the separate, the, the hashtag in Python is, is essentially what the comment is and is really the only thing that is interpreted as a comment. Everything else like these triple quotes and all that stuff, 
that all is just doc strings and used to you know document basically to document functions whereas comments are used to document code um, so there it is folks that is how you write and how to comment in python if you have any questions more about this please leave it leave it your question down in the comments below uh, if this provided any value please smash that like button and until next time keep on programming